so I was doing a little bit of testing um, just because I could right now and I'm comparing the render speeds in between the um, server and the main rig and wow <laughs> you know when you see it on paper it's like yeah they're relatively close the 79 100 XTX and the um, 4090. In practice, though, it is staggering the difference. So I ran the two clips, roughly the same um, renders, and the um, the the AMD GPUs, and I've got two of them in the system. Um, I'll circle back on that in a minute, but that completed the render in five minutes and some change. The 4090, tasked with the same render, completed it in a minute and 30 seconds. Again, just mind-blowing, the speed difference in between the two. Um, if you really need your videos exported fast, 4090 is hands down the best way to go. I mean, there's no two ways about it. Um, it is by far the superior product. Now, with that said, the 7900 XTXs combined are not equal to the price of 14090. So take that for a little bit of balance is that you can pick up a 7900 XTX with 24 gigs of VRAM, which is super important for what I do, and come in at half to maybe a third if you're looking for a really good deal of the price of an NVIDIA 4090. Now, when you do the math and you realize that the render speed makes up for that difference, then it gets a little bit harder. But at the same time, there is, there are no 4090s that would fit in the render server. The only thing that would fit in the render server would be a Quattro card, and those are even more expensive. So there's, there's no good way to do this. And when I really think about it, the 7900 XTXs definitely give me what I was looking for, especially at the price point. Um, the 4090s are just too expensive. I mean, they really are. I mean, NVIDIA has a stranglehold on the market, and it shows. I mean, uh, when you're dealing with that much of a performance gap, it it's hard to justify putting a slower card in. Now, if I could get both GPUs to balance the render load, that would change the paradigm entirely. But as of right now, that's not how DaVinci works. So for fusion effects and things of that nature, the dual GPUs come into play, but when it comes to actually output and the re final render output, that is done on one GPU alone, um, which is a real bummer. It, it really feels like that's a missed opportunity because you could sync that and just tear through a render if you had the ability to split that into two. Um, and you, I say I know it's possible, the NVIDIA, one of the reasons that it is as fast as it is, is it has dual render, um, dual encode streams inside the GPU. So it almost, I'm going to make some really broad generalizations here, but it acts like two GPUs running together. You've got two encode streams working simultaneously 
on your render. And when you're doing that, you keep the thing fed. And that is, that is a point that you have to keep in mind, is you have to keep that thing fed. Otherwise, it won't... If you can't utilize all of that bandwidth, then it's worthless. But assuming you've got the right workload and you're feeding it correctly, it, it destroys everything else, absolutely decimates. So this has been just a quick babble about the uh, 4090 versus the uh, 7900 XTX in real world scenarios. This video will be brought to you by the 7900 XTX because I like to do other things.